And now, we'd like to feature... We did it. We are still alive. <laughs> everything well, hasn't ended yet. The world oh, hasn't ended, gosh. but everything has gone to shit. I'll just get it off has. Angry Birds. And did you see the, the picture I did, Grozy? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That was this great. One. The little poo icons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It's everywhere. <laughs> everything has gone to and there's just shit everywhere. Yep. Poo emojis. That's a yep, market. Property, property, crypto, shares, everything's just tanking. We are the two Aussie investors. Welcome to the two Aussie investors, episode 14. I am Anzac, and with me tonight, as always, the incredible, the amazing, the never duplicated Groves A. <laughs> And you notice I got rid of my mic. It's it's actually it's I didn't get rid of it. It's just here, but yeah, it sounds actually pretty good without it. Oh, it's <laughs> it just looks cool, though. annoying me because when I play things, I can't seem to get decent sound. You know. Yeah. So I don't know what to do. You know. Well, you're coming through loud and clear tonight. Nice, um, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so we talk about property shares. Cryptocurrency, gold or precious metals, and NVX. NVX. And they are all going to shit. Everything's all going, going to, to shit. shit. Yep. Nothing is good. It's all shit. <laughs> Everything's gone to shit. And we're Everything. not we're not financial advisors. Fuck no. Hey, look. We're just uh, two blokes. Two blokes about talking stuff. shit about shit going to shit. Yeah. Yeah, about shit going to shit. That's We're our just thing talking tonight. shit, shit about going shit going to shit. shit. It's just <laughs> shit. Seriously. Yep. We're not financial advisors. We're just shit talkers about shit. That's yeah. it. It's just shit. How many yeah. times can you say shit? Quite a lot. <laughs> Quite a lot. All right. Let's have a look what uh, the Groves' points of the day I haven't done. But it's all right. I, I am ready. Yeah. So if we were to go here, and um, can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. I guess we could start here. This is what you sent yep. me. I haven't seen this one. Should I hit play? Uh, this which, is the. Which um, is this one? I just read. Ah, oh, okay. All right. This is straight to oh. property. Yeah. I haven't yeah, seen this, this one cool. too. Why this two bedroom yeah. manly apartment sold for five? Million. Five million. I couldn't believe it. Mortgages are more expensive this week. Rate high, but it hasn't stopped Sydney apartment selling for a huge price. Should we have a quick look? I don't know whether that's... Got anything to do with it. Absolutely. In a wealthy country like ours, everyone should have a roof over their head. All right. New data shows 40% of renters in Sydney and Melbourne electorates are suffering financial stress as politicians prepare to fight an election. A poll from everybody's home in marginal electorates in Gilmore, blah, 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 found majority believe the government failed to confront this crisis. For those hoping to break into the housing market, the situation is just as dire particularly Die. amongst young people. 70% of young people think they'll never be able to break into the market. About a half of 18 to 25 year olds. So it'll be an important issue in how they vote in May. It's not loud, is it? Uh, it's not too bad. Double the first home, okay. Double the first home buyer scheme. Labor vowed to invest more in social housing, affordable housing, essential workers. Well, I think the main issue is they need to increase supply. Like, how it's a big topic, isn't it? It's a big topic, yeah. It's a big topic. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, uh, you sent this to me. So 
yeah. two bedroom apartment. There it is. Sold Amazing for five million. I mean, but some people still yeah. have some mad cash out there, don't they? Yeah, I, I guess that was the point. Was that um, yeah? There's still a lot of cash. Like, yeah, there's a lot of liquidity still out there, and for a quality place like that, I mean, it's the view that you're paying for. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, pretty amazing. This is what I wanted. Oh, it's one of the things I wanted to play you. Um. Okay, so um, we've got stuff about NVX. Uh, this is more property stuff. Should we watch a bit? I guess we're talking about property oh, this is now. From, a bit. Uh, this is from Jonathan, wasn't Jonathan, it? Jonathan. So we I talked about this. this. Yeah, it's about and, what we talked about last week. But it's interesting. We talked about it, and then ABC podcast talked about it after us. So we are yeah. on the cusp of current affairs. Yeah. Can you hear that? We'll just listen to a little bit. Yeah. While homeowners have been slugged with an interest rate rise for the first time in more than a decade, for Australians who rent, it's bad news too. The number of rental properties available is at the lowest level in almost 20 years, and rents are soaring. Today, business reporter Daniel Ziffer on what's driving the nation's rental crisis. Oh, we'll listen to this for a minute also, Gozi. What's yeah. driving this rental crisis we're having? Cool? Yep. Dan Ziffer, just describe for me what we have been seeing across the rental market recently. We have seen across the nation a massive housing crunch. A shortage of properties for sale and unprecedented demand has seen house prices surge. Rental stress is increasingly low, yeah. with rents at a seven-year high and vacancies at a record low. Now, it's worse in some areas than others, but across the board, we've seen a collapse in the number of vacant properties. That's pushing up prices. So demand is so hot, supply is so low, and rents are soaring. They've shot up in the last quarter to the highest we've seen since 2015. Places are looking at 15% rises. So really huge impulse on people whose wages have moved anywhere like that yeah. as they rent properties amongst the third of Australians who do. This is exactly what Jonathan was saying last week. Like well, and we're seeing that in capital cities around the country by the look of it. So in practical terms, Dan, what does that mean for the average rent? I mean, how much more are they paying? We're seeing over time as people end their agreements and start new ones or have to pursue new houses, which is generally the time when rents change. But say if you were paying $1,000 last year for a three-bedroom house in Brisbane, now you're looking at more like $1,200. So for a lot of people... That I'll just stop it there, Grossy, but heaps more, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, basically yeah. exactly what Jonathan was saying. It yeah, said that's what we were saying. 15%, yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, the answer is more supply. More supply and, uh, well, I guess the other thing is to get into the market. Like, yeah. There are, there are places out there. Yeah. You just, you're not, you're not going to be living right in the centre of, of Sydney or Melbourne, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. A few other things to look at. Okay. Yep. Um, I think that's all our property stuff. Um, yep. Do you want to get onto a bit of Nov Novanik stuff? Oh yeah, th this this came out today. So this yep. this is a huge announcement. Huge. Um, to the to the Defence Production Act. So that was the act that Biden uh, approved probably about a month ago. Yep. Um, which was ba is basically saying uh, that they want to move all of all of the batch material production uh, into America. But they just announced yesterday that they're expanding the different definition of domestic source. Yeah. The batch of materials include the UK, mm. Australia, and Canada. Yeah. Which is massive news. So it means, <laughs> yeah, it potentially mean, well, we've already seen it with, um, who was it? Uh, Sayona? Sayona Mining that got the 100 million? No. Uh, for the, it was, the, um, or, or Syrah, Syrah, sorry. Syrah Resources. Syrah? Yep. Syrah. Yeah. So Syrah. we've already seen it. Uh, we've already seen them get a $100 million loan from, yep. the, from the US government. 
Um, and I think this just says, tells me that there's going to be more and more coming. Yeah. And also, I think American companies will be looking to Australia, just like Philip 66 did mm. with Novonics. Big American companies will be looking at uh, smaller, smaller Australian exploration companies uh, and, and, and any company in the, in the battery raw material supply chain. It, it sounds weird okay. calling this the Defence Production Act. It sounds like something to do with war or something, doesn't it? You know. Well, it was actually started, if you look historically, the Defence Production Act was something that came about during World War II. During, wow, wow. And so, yeah. and now it exists to, yeah, a, you know, protect the exactly the supply chains. Yeah, 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 protecting the supply chains of of energy and america for america for yeah. america yep but and and as that guy says you get a feeling new industrial trade block is forming like 100 percent it is yeah uh, if they're only including western basically uk australia <laughs> canada yeah um, the uk australia canada are a domestic source now yeah so america sees us as a domestic source so they yeah. can give loans as we I mean, said we're just the 50 50 second state or something whatever it is yeah 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 so i, I just think it's massive massive news yep for, for any stock that's in the uh, ev or, or battery supply chain yeah it, and it's yet just huge. look it's just a it's just three lines in a little little tweet yeah and it? the media the media hasn't really picked up on it. But they I, haven't I picked up how big this is. That, that basically, that's saying that there's a lot of companies, Australian, UK, Canada, that yeah. if they supply um, to the American uh, They're energy. They're going to get favourable treatment by the US government and favorable by American Favourable treatment. Money. Companies. They get money. Yeah, they could get free... Well, not not free money, but really cheap loans from, yep. from the US government yep. to scale up and away, away you go, just like what they, they did for Syrah. Yeah. So I think you're going to see over the next six to 12 months a lot of announcements from Australian companies saying, oh, I've got a loan here from the US government to do this, this, and this. And while, uh, yeah. while we're on NVX, let's have a look at this horrible news. Oh, let's not oh. look at the chart. It's fucking terrible. Yeah. Well, no, we've got to look at the chart. Yeah. I don't want to do, but let's just look at the past year. Past yeah. year, we bought less than two dollars, and now it's three dollars ninety eight. So we're just going to look at a bucks. year, but really, look at this it's, fucking yeah, hell! It's still gone up nearly one hundred percent, I guess, or ninety five percent. Yeah, but there's a year. lot of people that have got into it over the past year, and it's been one yeah. heck of a roller coaster, hasn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, every EV stock's been smashed this week. And yeah, that's that's, that's the other point. Stocks. It it isn't. Um, it kind of doesn't have anything to do with Novonics. No, it's it's, it's, it's all the, it's all to do with interest rates. Interest like rates, and before that, it's this fucking war, and it's Putin. War. And it's... Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. <clears throat> Yeah, and the Monix has never looked so good. No. <laughs> yeah, well, it's cheap. That's, it's cheap. that's the way I look at it. Is that it's, it's cheap very as cheap? Fuck. And in very and cheap. in five years' time, you look at it and go, shit, four bucks could have got for four bucks. That, that's amazing. Amazing, yeah. honestly, amazing. Yeah. Okay, um, and yeah, so it did. This was the article that it 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 did rebound. When it hit, yeah, came up, surged thirteen percent today, up and down, up and down. It hasn't just gone down. down; it's gone up and down, up and down, yeah. up and down, up and down, 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 it, down. It went down to three dollars sixty and then came back up. Like yeah, during the day, it was just it was going around like a yo-yo. Yeah, uh, crazy, and, um, isn't it? Yeah, I think the market stabilized a bit now, and oh, there we go. That's that's yeah. the idea. Uh, the, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, you think it has, but who knows what it's going to do, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, the NASDAQ's nearly 25% down, so that's, that's correction territory, so you'd think. Um, you know. this, this is kind of related to mnemonics a bit, but it's, it's, 
when we can't watch all of this, this is the about the solid state battery. Um, oh, yep. And Toyota. Did you watch this one? Uh, yeah, I think I did. Yeah, but yeah, okay. play it because it was quite interesting. Well, just in a nutshell, a bit. So, uh, just to talk about it. So, um, what what happened is um, right now there's 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 lithium batteries, and there's solid state batteries, and the difference they're both you know rechargeable batteries for electric vehicles and houses and this and that. Um, but the difference, if I'm right, is just to dumb it right down, is um, in the electrolyte. So they both have the, the anode, the negative, the, the cathode, the positive, and the shit in the middle um, of solid state is a little bit different. <clears throat> yes. Solid. Um, yeah. But they still have the same material. So, yeah. So Toyota was the last of the big car companies to 100% commit to, to this EV change. Yeah. Um, and now they have committed to it. And, you know, they, when they announced it, they announced all their cars and this and that. They, they were just the last one, maybe not the last one to commit, but the last one to announce. Yeah? Yeah. And yeah. so they're going solid state. So a battery that's a little bit different than the, lithium battery would you say it's yeah. a little bit different yeah well it's it's yeah i think it's um it's is a lot, it better uh, yeah apparently it, it lasts longer than the lithium ions yeah lithium ion, ion batteries but the big question is uh is it is it actually uh economical to produce that's the big question yep. i have because why is 95 percent of other uh, OEMs gone down the lithium ion path versus solid state. Yeah. So it's it's a yeah it's a it's a huge deal that to, that Toyota's gone down this path. Mm. But, um, I'm sure they got their reason why. But, um, but it's it's not a bad thing for the EV change at all. Um, no. That one no. huge so, big car company is making something a little bit different. I mean, at, at the end of the day. Um, they're, they're all going to electric in some form or another. Yeah. And and you're going to have different versions of batteries that some will be solid state. Some will Look at this question. What, what are the top five most important components of an electric car? Well, let's just sum that down to what are what is the most important component of an electric car? It's its battery. It's the most yeah, expensive part. It's the heaviest part. Yeah. It's, it's the only thing holding in a way, holding this technology back, you know, from this combustion change is, is the expensive battery uh, that, yeah. that yep. doesn't last as long as everything else. Um, yep. So and that, and that, that's what Musk has said all along, hasn't he? He said, once we can get an electric car to be the, like about, around that $30,000 mark, then it's, it's all about to take off. It's Again, all about most, Ameri most Americans yep. can afford an electric car then. Exactly. Get them down oh, I just hit it. I just hit play, Grossy. Watch a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Battery's number the battery one. is very important because that is where the energy to move the car comes from. The EV industry has settled into the lithium-ion battery, but the battery has several drawbacks that do affect EV performance. To beat the competition, many car makers are in a race to make the best battery. Yep, One of those sure leading the race is Toyota, whose solid state battery has finally hit the market. What is a solid state battery? How is it better than a standard lithium ion battery? And how far has Toyota come in developing its breakthrough? So, yeah, they're just saying it's better because it's, um, you know, lasts longer, basically, more yeah. charge and lasts longer. But yeah. again, they're the only ones making it. So, but they're, they're, they're not a small fry, you know? No, no, definitely so, not. So they can do that. They yeah. can do that. Yeah. They've and got, they've and got all the production facilities to do it. So. And, and when they're selling, you know, they're... Um, and and that, that's their competitive advantage, I guess. That's exactly a competitive advantage. Like, no. okay, this Toyota compared to this Hyundai or whatever, like they're yeah. both EVs, the Toyota has a solid state, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so it's nothing but a good thing. Yeah. I think. All right.
let's have a look at some other stuff. So we looked at that. Yeah. Okay, what's this one? US Department of Energy, uh, you said this. Charge faster and longer. Okay, new. Uh, that, that was just, um, that was just another uh, infrastructure law that they've, that they've put yeah, through. Yeah, we had this, this yeah. first one, yep, yep, okay. Yeah. Yep, cool, okay. Yeah, there's the first, there's the second, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, this is about this, the, the world going to shit, yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. Falling yeah, stock market good. could signal start of global recession. Yeah. Six different the main, the main reason I, I like this article was the, the six points of saying, you know, why, why everything's in the shit at the moment is there's the six main things going on. If you keep scrolling down. Well, let's, let's watch this, yeah? Well, this stuff, no, the video doesn't really relate. Okay, video doesn't relate. All right, mm. well, let's just read it then. Cool? Yeah, yeah. So six, six, okay. In the past several years, investors enjoyed historic rallies in stock prices. But more recently, global stock markets have begun to lose altitude. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, why is it happening? What lies ahead? Let's take a look. Okay. ASX 100, S&P 500. So the PEs have, have come down big time. Yeah. And that's, that's to do with the, the bond yields going up. Oh, is that number one? There's number one of the point. Uh, and here's yeah. number two, is it? Yeah. China, Europe. So he, the, these are the six points. Okay. So, you know, China, property market, crash. No, just yep. scroll down. Yep. In China, uh, a property market crash, an Omicron lockdown, lockdown. We've gutted domestic demand for lockdowns will end. But the prospect of a weak recovery is obvious given reopening will also liberate the virus leading to more restrictions. In Europe, war and an energy shock are damaging both demand and supply. European consumer confidence is struggling amidst Ukraine chaos and soaring energy prices from the same have already shut down some industries. Okay. And the US inflation. <laughs> it's like, what's fucking going right? Yeah, I know. Hey? That's, what's uh, going right? This was, this was a, thought this was a brilliant summary of everything that's going on. Right. Inflation has taken yeah. root much more deeply than elsewhere. And the central bank is determined to snuff it out by downsizing demand to fit with the limited labor supply. This is leading to a series of 50 basis point interest rate hikes that will sooner rather than later damage household consumption. All right, there's no good news, is there? It's all shit news, no. is there? All right. Oh, that's it. Uh, okay. But yeah. Kind of what we we're saying before about you know there's there's all these things all happening all at yeah. once and that's why you know we're going to get a slowdown of, of some sort. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we've seen it with the market. You know, the market's tanked over the last month. Keeps and tanking because of all because of all of these issues. Like mm. if if the war in Ukraine ends tomorrow, the market will will, will rebound massively because mm. then. The market will think, well, inflation is going to drop because there'll be more supply of oil, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So I think it's only going to take one or two of these things to reverse, or if China comes out of lockdown, mm. and we'll start to see start to see the market reverse, and mm. you, you'll, you'll start to see it go back up again. We'll start to see less. Oh, poo. Less poo. Yeah. That's <laughs> what we're getting. Yeah. Lots yeah. of shit. There's another big shit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, believe it or not, that's all the articles I had, Gravesy. Yeah. That's all good. Quite a quite a short one. Uh, yeah. I hope for next week we'll have good news and things have started to rebound and you know, yeah. Yeah. Some other events may have happened. I mean, it. it you know, when when shit comes down. 
nobody's like, yay, this is great. I guess, you know, the people yeah. that are like that are, um, are the people that, you know, don't have any investments and, and you know, don't have anything and don't have anything to worry about. Short sellers. Care. Yeah. Short sellers love it. Yeah, short sellers. Okay. Yeah. And um, people that just want a bit of chaos in the world. Um, yeah. And also the people that would see this as some opportunities out there. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to look at it. But yeah. There's opportunity now. And that's yeah. the old... There's there's always opportunity in a crisis. Is that yeah. So, so there's I mean, who, six who'd crises have going on at the moment, all at once. All um, at once. All at once. There's yeah. a lot there, and it it can't go on forever, right? You know, exactly. You can't yeah. keep China in lockdown forever. Yeah. Um. They can't. Well, I almost said that this war can't go on forever, but who knows how long that'll bloody go on for? Yeah. But what I mean, one thing we do know is that markets always recover and beat beat the previous highs. Yeah, that's the thing that gives me confidence. And same with house prices. Yeah, if you look at house prices over the last fifty years. Sure that you may have had twenty percent dips, but then over time they'll they'll recover. Mm. And that that's just the way the that's because of the basis of the capitalist system. It's yeah. going to keep growing. You're going to yeah. have inflation, which is what's happening now, and then prices go up. So. Yeah. Um, yeah and i mean as we said too house prices going down sucks but rents yeah. going up if you've got some investments is good yeah yeah you know? yeah so, you know what is it one person's loss is an, another man's gain no, another like man's that. gain yeah, yeah. so yeah. this really is the the time to think like that yeah you know yeah i think any any uh you know, person wanting to get wanting to get into property now is probably a good time mm. to start looking. Yeah, definitely. But, like interest rates are definitely going to go up, but it also means that um, sellers are going to reduce their expectations. Yeah. So it's all, you know, it's all interrelated. Yeah. And, and you could and snap, don't forget, snap, like, snap a bargain. The, like most of the growth that we've seen over this boom, it wasn't apartments. A lot of it was houses. Yeah. Yeah, true. So it was the bigger properties, uh, the big houses, and bit, well, you know, I think big apartments too. But generally, it was yeah, it was houses. Um, yeah, people wanted the backyard because of COVID. But, yeah, there yeah. might be a lot of opportunities for some some good apartment buys right now too, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent agree on that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, apartments definitely haven't gone up as much as, as and they'll houses. catch up. They'll catch up for sure. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like they're relatively a lot cheaper now. Yeah. And a, and a um an apartment, you know. Yeah. And also, let's not forget that even if interest rates go up another one percent from now, mm. that's still historically very low. Cheap rates. as fuck. It really is cheap. Anything you know? anything with a less than a five is yeah. historically cheap as. Cheap as, right. cheap as, cheap so, as, yeah. You know, so we've been living in unprecedented times with interest rates starting with a one. Like we've been living in La La Land. Yeah. You know, <laughs> La La Land. That's what we've been living yeah. in. Yeah. COVID fucking La La Land, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Cuz. Legend. No worries, Cuz. All See good. See you next week. No worries. We well, have good it. news next week. Bring it on. Bring on some good news, finally. Yeah. Finally. I need some announcements. Announcements, announcements. from the Vonics. That's all I want. I just want 100 the market million. I, just want, I don't want much. I just want 100 million. Yeah, you just know? 100 million loan. Just yeah. 100 million. You know? Grant. <laughs> 100 million grant. Cash. Yeah. Cash. Cash. Cash is up. See you, Cass. All right, guys. Catch up.